What's going on, everybody? We're Embrace the Globe 21. Yes, we are. My name's Spencer. And I'm Daniel. And look, we are checking out 101 facts about the Philippines. This is one of the countries that has come out Man, on our channel. It. And yes, we've gotten suggestions of uh, everything and all the things about Philippine culture. So what we need you to do is one, see, tell us if these facts are accurate or not. Because very important. 101 facts, uh, they're a, a bit older. But anyway, also, uh, where do we go in terms of what we check out about Philippine culture? Yeah, pretty, guys, pretty much. And we thank you in advance for those comments. Yes. They are appreciated. You ready? Yeah, man, let's dive into it. Three, two, one. Greetings, mother factors. My name is Sam, and today I, well, I'm not going to be telling you anything as I'm away on a hashtag vacay. Amsterdam, actually, since you asked, but more like Samsterdam, am I right? <laughs> or Amster Sam, or Samster Sam. Sorry, off topic here. The point is, I am not here, but my good pals Chris, Leaf, and Jacob will be giving you the lowdown about the fabulous cluster of tropical islands known collectively as the Philippines. Yes, the nation known around the world for its stunning beaches, fabulous wildlife, and near ubiquitous nurses. But why should you be very careful before getting married in the Philippines? Why do the people of Manila despise Claire Danes? And will this video go ultra viral and inspire an all expenses trip funded by the Philippine Department of Tourism? <laughs> Let's hope so. Two out of three of those <laughs> questions are going to be answered. So, crank up that volume, surround yourself with a varied selection of snacks, and prepare yourself for a non stop Filipino extravaganza. This is 101 Facts About the Philippines. Oh, All right. Yeah. So, so far, I think the first thing that he mentioned, like, why is. Why can't you get? I think you can't get divorced in the Philippines. So yeah. there's that one, and Claire, I don't know anything about. Uh, but the Filipino Pinoys do come out. Yeah. So we know that much out of the two of the three hey. uh, parts. Yes, yes, that's for damn sure. Yeah, I don't know who. Claire, I think she's an actress. I don't think she's a singer. I think I think she's an old actress that is is in obscurity right now. I'm not sure. Let's yeah. let's dive into it. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> Take it away, boys. Number one. The Philippines, known officially as the Republic of the Philippines, is a unitary sovereign country in Southeast Asia. Boom. Fact one. Knocked right out of the park. We are off to a phenomenal start, guys. We should be proud of ourselves. <laughs> Number two. Situated in the Western Pacific Ocean, the Philippines is surrounded by the South China Sea on the west, the Philippine Sea on the east, and the Celebes Sea on the southwest. As such, the Philippines shares maritime borders, meaning borders over water, with China and Taiwan to the north, Vietnam to the west, Palau to the east, and Malaysia and Indonesia to the south. Number three. According to the National Mapping and Resource Information Authority, the Philippines consists of 7,641 islands. Wow. Which frankly wow. is a large amount of islands. Interestingly, only 2,000 of them are inhabited and nearly 5,000 are still entirely unnamed. Hmm, sounds haunted. Time for an adventure. Right, Jacob? Sure. <laughs> that sounds like a Scooby-Doo episode in the making. That's crazy, man. So... Um, that, that's that's tons of islands. Mm -hmm. I wonder, has anyone as have people stepped foot on all of them? You know, or are they just Google mapped? Like, that's an island. We got that one. Has anyone actually been out there? Because I would love to be that explorer, or maybe not. But you know what? Probably not. Yeah, probably not. Probably I'll not. To say. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'd be getting into. It's like some <laughs> uninhabited island with some crazy fucking like dinosaur shit. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> That'd be my luck. <laughs> yeah, but to say you warn me against things like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, the only way I'm ever traveling to an island is going to be on a wooden pirate boat. That's <laughs> the only way to travel to new islands, you know? Like, there's no way I can just take a modern boat, but um, <laughs> something like that, yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. cool islands. Number Dave. four, I want to eat it. The nation's numerous islands are broadly categorized into three main geopolitical divisions Luzon in the north, Mindanao in the south, and Visayas nestled between them in the middle. How cozy! 
These three areas are further divided into 17 regions, 81 provinces, 145 cities, 1,489 municipalities, and 42,036 barangays, the native Filipino term for a village. Wow. Number 5. The Philippines has a total land area of 343,448 square kilometers. That's a little smaller than the US state of New Mexico. Shout out to all New Mexico fans! And old Mexico fans, we did a video about you, not New Mexico, old Mexico. But we love you all. Number all right. six. As the Philippines is located both on the Pacific Ring of Fire and fairly close to the equator, the country is highly prone to powerful earthquakes and typhoons. On the other significantly less scary hand, the position of the Philippines also grants it abundant natural resources and staggering biodiversity. In fact, number seven. The Philippines is one of only a handful of mega biodiverse countries in the world, owing to its fabulously extensive range of flora and fauna, including numerous endemic species, which are organisms found nowhere else on Earth. Such species include more than 170 different types of birds and 100 types of mammals. Number eight. That's a lot of animals right there. That's a lot of animals. <sighs> probably Man. don't. Their zoo is probably one of the best in the entire world, if they have a zoo. Yeah, they're just like, it's open. We call this zoo outdoors. Yeah. <laughs> Just go out and see the animals. That's how many animals they have. Yeah. How many animals do they have? Yes. yes. <laughs> In prehistoric times, the archipelago's earliest inhabitants were likely the Negritos, which refers to a range of populations inhabiting various isolated areas of South and Southeast Asia. The term Negrito isn't particularly politically correct by today's standards, as it is a Spanish word that essentially just means little black person, referring to the group's relatively short stature and superficially African features of dark skin and tightly curled hair. Number 9. The Negritos were followed by successive waves of people from various other areas, such as Indonesians, Malay, Chinese, and Austronesians. Even the faraway Arabs eventually got around to visiting the islands that would later become the Philippines. Number 10. In 1521, an explorer by the name of Ferdinand Magellan landed in Homanhon Island, located in the eastern Visayas region of eastern Samar. Magellan was a Portuguese explorer leading a Spanish fleet, marking the beginning of the Hispanic colonization of the archipelago. Europeans arriving in a faraway land? I don't know, <laughs> sounds sketchy. You know what they're like. <laughs> Can't yeah. trust those Europeans. Yeah. We've discovered something, like, but we're already here. Shut up. We discovered you. I got you. I, I love that. God. Number 11. Oh damn, it's your boy! A few years later, in 1543, the Spanish explorer Rui Lopez de Villalobos dubbed the archipelago Las Islas Filipinas in honor of Philip II of Spain, and the name stuck. Interestingly, Philip II was the Spanish king who sent the Spanish Armada to conquer England in the name of Catholicism. Didn't work well for you though, did it, Phil? Mm -mm. Number 12. The Philippines ultimately became part of the Spanish Empire for more than 300 years, wow. resulting in Catholicism becoming the fledgling nation's dominant religion, which it remains to this day. However, the Philippines is officially secular, with the separation of church and state specifically outlined in the Philippine Constitution. Number 13. Regardless, the nation's highly Catholic society makes the Philippines one of only two predominantly Christian nations in Southeast Asia, the other being the tiny, super-Catholic nation of East Timor. Number 14. During this time, Manila became a trade hub that connected the West to Asia via a Trans-Pacific trade route used by large trade boats called Manila Galleons, which did lots of trade. The route connected Manila with Acapulco in the Americas, taking spices, silk, porcelain, and gold to the New World in exchange for delicious Mexican silver. Number 15. Against a backdrop of increasing indigenous rebellion in the form of the Philippine Revolution, Spain ceded the Philippines to the United States in 1898 as part of the settlement of the Spanish-American War. It was all kicking off, basically. Oh, wow. That's... Oh, okay. So we we inherited that from uh, Spain. From Spain, that's this... part of the deal, I guess. Ending the Spanish-American War. Okay. Wow. I wonder if that if we knew that was on the table. They're like, wait, what? What do we get? I'm like, oh, what? Okay. We got the Philippines for a little bit. I'm like, what does that say? We got the Philippines. What's the Philippines? I'm like, okay, cool. Take it. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, put all of this in leaf number 16 
In response, Filipino nationalists established the first Philippine Republic on the 1st of January 1899, but the United States refused to recognize it. Little over a month later, the Philippine Republic declared war on the United States, and the subsequent fighting became known by various names, such as the Filipino-American War and the Philippine Insurrection. Hostilities ended on the 23rd of March 1901, with oh the capture God. of Philippine President Emilio Aguinaldo, ending the First Philippine Republic. Number 17. Aside from a brief period of Japanese occupation during the Second World War, the United States retained sovereignty over the islands until 1946, when the Philippines was finally recognized as an independent nation. With this, the Philippines became the very first country in Southeast Asia to get independence after the Second World War. Number 18. In 1965, however, a charismatic former lawyer by the name of Ferdinand Marcos was elected president, winning on a now hilariously ominous slogan of This Nation Can Be Great Again. Though initially popular, public opinion began to turn against him and his infamously shoe-hungry wife, Imelda Marcos, owing to widespread poverty, rising inflation, rising crime, and a whole lot of corruption. Num so that was their equivalent of Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette. Got it. I'm pretty yeah. sure there was some Filipino uh, e equivalent of that woman saying, let them eat cake. Yes. Yes. So it started like everything. It starts amazing, then just turns to shit. Mm hmm. This country can be great again. Hmm. Hmm. Let's just hurry Number up. 19. <laughs> Let's just hurry up. Like, yeah. Just hurry up and skip skip to the to the to the um, the shit part of it. You know what yeah. I mean? That's, yeah. It's like well, this country can't like this. Just, just, just okay. Great. Let's just get to the shit part. It always turns to shit. So. Yeah, pretty much. Since the constitution prevented him from serving a third term in 1972, Marcos declared martial law in order to remain in power. A national curfew was imposed. Press freedom was curtailed. International travel was banned, and an estimated 50,000 opponents of Marcos were jailed, exiled, or killed. That's number shit 20. Part. Following rigged elections and the murder of one of his main political opponents, Benigno Aquino Jr., the rise of the non-violent People Power Revolution eventually forced Marcos to flee from the Philippines in 1986, finally ending his 21-year-long wow. totalitarian regime. Marcos Yikes. died in 1989 in Honolulu, Hawaii. Number 21. Despite dying in 1989, Marcos wasn't buried until 2016, over 27 years later. Furious debates over whether Marcos deserved to be interred into the National Heroes Cemetery prevented his burial for years, and for a long period of time his body was preserved in a glass coffin inside a refrigerated crypt in the northern province of Ilocos Norte. He was finally buried on the 18th of November 2016, to much protest and outrage from those who understandably consider him a dictator, not a hero. Do you think Marcos should have been buried in the Heroes Cemetery? Let us know in our temporarily very political YouTube poll. Number two. <laughs> yeah, we probably shouldn't spark that flame. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Like you said, we should move on, right? Yep, always. Just mm -hmm. move on. It has to be talked about. Glad they talked about it. And moving on. Yep, yep. 22. Since the death of Marcos, the Philippines has seen several presidents come and go. Benigno Aquino III, who served as the 15th president of the Philippines from 2010 to 2016, is nicknamed Noi Noi. Not only that, his four sisters are also known by nicknames. Veal, Chris, Pinky, and unfortunately, Ballsy. Number 23. The current president is Rodrigo Duterte, who was elected on the promise that he would reduce crime simply by killing tens of thousands of criminals. Duterte has repeatedly claimed that he personally killed three people accused of kidnapping and rape while serving as the mayor of Davao City in Mindanao, despite earlier statements from representatives that he shouldn't be taken literally. Number 24. Sadly, the Philippines continues to struggle with political violence even in the 21st century. In fact, there have been over 1,200 political assassinations in the Philippines since 2001. Number 25. The flag of the Philippines is made up of two equally sized bands of royal blue and scarlet, with a white triangle on the hoist side containing several stylized stars. The flag also has a unique feature, as it is flown with the blue band at the top during peacetime and with the red band at the top when the country is at wow. war. And now cool. it's time for- Wow. I never noticed that before. That's that's kind of crazy. I, I like that. You know, no, it, hey, it makes it makes it makes it um. It's kind of like during I think what is it? We have something like that. I think during a time of war, um, Lady Liberty is holding arrows instead of an olive branch. 
I believe, something like that on our oh, seals. Okay. I believe, I believe, I could be way wrong, but I know that if you flip the American flag upside down, um, that means distress. Yeah. That yeah, means distress. Yeah. That's what I thought. For your boy, Leaf. No, actually, I'm, I'm going to tag in for this one. Uh, it's going to be Milo now for number 26. The Tal Volcano on the Philippine island of Luzon is one of the world's 17 ominously named decade volcanoes. These angry lava shooting hills are being specifically monitored based on their history of large, destructive eruptions and proximity to highly populated areas. Well, that was weird. Um, Coming um, for you. Ah! Hashtag bring back Sam. <laughs> Number 27. Tal is also notable for its physical geography, as it is located inside a lake on the main Philippine island of Luzon. In addition, the volcano's caldera contains a lake, inside of which sits a small island called Vulcan Point. This makes Vulcan Point the world's largest island in a lake on an island in a lake on an island. On a I lake that. and an island and a lake in an, an island, island and a volcano and a... Like, who are we? What is that? You know how trippy that would be to, like, discover that? You're like, okay, this is how you get there. Go across the lake. Get to the get to the mountain, then go across the other lake and get on that mountain. And it's like what? Like how many? It's like fucking Atlantis. <sighs> rings. That's awesome though that that exists. Yeah. Uh, should we do? Uh, should we visit it? Y'all let us know down below. That would be awesome. Yeah. At least once, right? Yeah. You only live once. Number twenty-eight. When Mount Pinatubo on the Philippine island of Luzon erupted on the 15th of June 1991, the volcano ejected 10 billion metric tons of magma. It was bad, basically. However, luckily, early detection of the eruption enabled the evacuation of tens of thousands of people, saving numerous lives. Number 29. In addition, roughly 20 million tons of sulfur dioxide was ejected into the atmosphere. Over several months, this cloud of toxic gas spread all over the planet and was so significant that it actually caused average global temperatures to drop by half a degree Celsius. Wow. Number 30. In the Philippine island province of Camiguin, there are five main towns and more than 10 volcanoes, the largest concentration of volcanoes per square kilometer in the world. Wow. Number 31. The Philippines typically experience five earthquakes of moderate magnitude every year, seven earthquakes of major magnitude every 10 years, and one large magnitude earthquake also every 10 years. It's a very wobbly country, basically. Mm. Number 32. The Philippine island of Palawan is well known for its jaw-dropping natural beauty, but it's also the location of an 8.2 kilometer long underground river, making it the longest in the world. At least it was until divers discovered a subterranean stream in Mexico that measures roughly 10 kilometers in length. God damn you, Mexico. Like, we can't have nice things, Mexico. <laughs> oh my god, it's number 30, sorry. The Philippine Trench, located to the east of the Mindanao Island in the Pacific Ocean, is the third deepest spot under the world's oceans after the Mariana Trench and the Tonga Trench. It stretches down around six and a half miles deep which is as almost as deep as Sam's unerring love for Jennifer Lawrence. Sam, it's creepy. Please stop. Oh Number 34. The Rice Terrace of the Philippine Cordilleras are a UNESCO World Heritage Site and are reportedly around 2,000 years old, though there are conflicting studies that suggest they may be considerably younger than that. Regardless, the terraces are staggeringly beautiful and are often referred to as the eighth wonder of the world. Number 35. The national symbol of the Philippines is a Philippine eagle, which is the largest eagle species by length and wing size. Wow. Declared the national bird of the Philippines in 1995, the Philippine eagle is also known as the monkey-eating eagle, due to the largely incorrect belief that they eat monkeys. <laughs> it is also critically endangered, and as such, killing one is punishable by 12 years in jail. Wow. Damn. So we both have uh, an eagle as our national bird. There's and... Yeah. And just like Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so three countries that have the the eagle as their uh bird. Yeah. And and to my is our bald eagle extinct? I can't remember. No. No, it's no. not. It it used to be endangered a long time ago. Yeah, but yeah, that's what I thought. They're basically like pigeons out in Alaska though. That's where they're like thriving. Got it. 
Got it. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but still not a good idea to kill one of them, right? No, no, but that's crazy. 12 years in prison? Mm-hmm. That's insane. But they are endangered. It'd be like you go into Africa and pop in one of those uh, uh, black rhinos if they are if they still exist. Yeah, basically what Jimmy John did. Yeah. Yeah. Number 36. The Philippines has the highest rate of discovery of new animal species on the planet. In hmm. fact, 16 new species of mammals have been discovered in the last 10 years alone. Wow. There's a lot of mammals. There's too many mammals. Number 37. The Philippines is home to the endemic Philippine mouse deer, the world's smallest hoofed animal. Known locally as the Pilundok, this darling little bundle of fragile sweetness stands about 40 adorable centimeters or 16 precious little inches tall at shoulder level. Oh, look, at it, look at its little hoofs. Oh. Number 38. The Philippines and its neighbor Indonesia are the only places on Earth other than the Americas where skunks can be found. In this part of the world, they're called stink badgers, as they were once incorrectly thought to be more closely related to badgers than skunks. Number 39. Gollum suluensis, a species of shark discovered off Palawan Island in the western Philippines, gets its name from Gollum, the wretched, emaciated character from the legendarium of J.R.R. Tolkien, who was corrupted by the One Ring created by the Dark Lord Sauron. You'll know all about this because you've no doubt already watched 101 Facts about Middle-earth and the Lord of the Rings, <laughs> right? Right? No- Not yet. Not yet. Mm. <laughs> One of these days, maybe. Yeah, when we have all that extra time. When we have the 20th. 20... On, on, on a different channel. Yeah, when we find the 27th hour. Yeah, the 27th. We're already on the 27th hour. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Oh, man. Number 40. Apparently, the offspring of a zebra and a donkey, variously known as a zonkey, zebronki, or zedronk, was first bred in Manila Zoo all the way back in 1962. What? Okay, they have a zoo. Great. (laughs) uh, What? A zonky? A zonky. A a, a de-zonk? That's a great great reggae band name right there. Why not not just call it a striped ass? That makes more sense to me. Come on, man. It's it's right in front of you. Have fun with it. (laughs) Get down with your bad self, Zabronky. Number 41. Over 900 species of orchids grow in the Philippines. That's something you know now. Let's hope it didn't replace anything important. The meaning of life. As of 2015, the Philippines has a population of at least 100 million people, each with their own thoughts, feelings, dreams, and aspirations. As such, the country is the 8th most populated country in Asia and the 12th most populated country on Earth. Wow. Number 43. Interestingly, depending on your definition of the word, roughly 10 million additional Filipino people live overseas, forming one of the world's largest diasporas. In the United States of America, for example, Filipinos are the second largest Asian American group, second only to the Chinese. Number 44. In fact, the Philippines is the world's largest supplier of nurses, with about a quarter of all overseas nurses coming from the country. Thanks for the medical help, Philippines. We promise never to film ourselves riding a BMX off a balcony and onto a trampoline and into an above-ground pool ever again. Promise. Number. F- uh huh. You sure about that? <laughs> you want to do that intentionally? You want to uh, uh, be in contact with with a. At least a female Philippine nurse. Yeah. Yeah, I, right. I bet that's what you want, narrator. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's exactly what he's shooting for. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> 45. There are roughly 170 individual languages spoken in the Philippines, including cool-sounding languages like Ilocano, Cebuano, and Waray. English and Filipino, the standardized form of the Austronesian language of Tagalog, are the country's two official languages. Number 46. The term Tagalog is derived from the phrase Tagailog, which means from the river. Oh, that was a nice quick fact. Nice, streamlined, easy to edit. Number. <laughs> I always, when I first saw the lo- the word Tagalog, I thought it was tagalong, like uh, yeah. like go along with somebody or one of the. Uh, Girl Scout cookie v- varieties. Yeah. That's what I thought that was. I was like, T- Tagalog? I was like, huh, interesting. That's a fun one to say. Yeah. 100%. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Number 47. 
There is a variant of Tagalog known as Konyo that is generally used by upper class youths in and around Manila. As such, the term Konyo is often used to refer to those entitled rich kids themselves, apparently deliberately, as the word originates from the Spanish word Konyo, which is, um, a very bad word for female genitalia. Number wow. 40. According to the latest census, at least 52 million people in the Philippines speak English, making it the fifth largest English-speaking nation behind the US, India, Pakistan, and the UK. Number 49. The capital city of the Philippines is Manila, located in the northern region of Luzon. The city was founded on the 24th of June 1571 by a Spanish conquistador called Miguel Lopez de la Gazbi and has a fairly small population of about 1,780,000 people. <laughs> However, no, no, number 50. According to the UN, Manila is the most densely populated city in the world with over 46,000 people per square mile. Wow. It really depends on who you ask, however, as different sources use different parameters to get different results. Basically, truth is an illusion and everything is meaningless. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Uh, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a... just, I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't. I love my space. I love mm -hmm. my space. Mm hmm. Yeah. But if you know the both of us very well, you know we don't do cities. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's a lot of people. That's, that's a lot of people, man. Yeah, like we, the only comparison we have is like, like we found out that Tokyo is very densely populated, and we thought New York City was densely populated, but apparently it's nothing compared to both that's, Tokyo and Manila. I, I, and that, that in my mind doesn't make sense. It doesn't compute. Like that's mm -hmm. just how is it like more? I I would have a panic attack every day. Yeah. <sighs> Number 51. Manila was named after the white flowers that grow on mangrove trees, the Nilad, or Cithophora hydrophilacea if you're a scientist or just a tedious knob. The phrase may linad translates to there are nilad there. Number 52. The first Filipino saint came from Manila. Named Lorenzo Ruiz, he was executed in Japan for refusing to renounce his Christianity, despite having been brutally tortured. As such, Ruiz is also the patron saint of the Philippines. Number 53. The southernmost district of the city of Manila is called Malate, which is thought to be a corruption of the Tagalog word Malate, meaning salty, which was, incidentally, my nickname at school. Nice. <laughs> don't ask. Yeah, what, why did they say No, that? it's seriously don't. Just forget about it, alright? Okay. Number 54. When viewed from above, Manila's city hall looks like a coffin. It was designed to look like a shield of the Knights Templar emblazoned with a cross to symbolize the protection of the country under the Roman Catholic Church. But no, no, that's a coffin. That just looks exactly like a coffin. Yeah. That's what that is. Yeah, that's pretty much a coffin right there. <laughs> that's not a shield, bro. Mm, oh, that's God. Uh, coffin, some poor, nice. poor planning right there, but... There's better things to look at in Manila than that. Than that, yeah. That's, yeah. that's funny. It's a coffin. No, it's a shield. It looks like a coffin. Yes. <laughs> Number 55. Being in such close proximity to China has obviously had a profound effect on the Philippines. Unsurprisingly, Manila's Chinatown dates back to the 16th century, making it the oldest Chinatown in the world, not including oh. actual Chinese towns. Ah. 56. While promoting the film Broke Down Palace in 1998, American actress Claire Danes described Manila, in which the production filmed for several months, as a ghastly and weird city. She went on to say that Manila smelled of cockroaches with rats all over, and that there is no sewage system and the people do not have anything, no arms, no legs, no eyes. In response, Manila's city council voted to declare Danes persona non grata and banned all of her movies from being shown in the city. No wow. Oh, man. To you think know you what? say that and you get banned, I hope you're not shocked about that. Yeah. Uh, it just, dude, that. Uh, you take Claire Danes. Probably one of the. She has to be one of the poshest uppity people. And then you put them in a, a tropical city like that you're gonna have you gotta watch what you say man you gotta idiots idiots yeah. out there you, you gotta watch what you say you gotta be invitable again you gotta be reinvited because yeah. who knows what other movies gonna film there exactly idiots. i mean uh, whoever the equivalent of the posh pinoys is probably not even gonna be uh, 
welcoming of Claire after saying oh, things yeah. like that. I I wouldn't be f that f that lady. Yeah, like dude, whatever, whatever. You don't insult all of us ever. Mm. Anyway, yeah. Persona non grata and banned all of her movies from being shown in the city. Number fifty seven. Tomas Claudio Street in Manila was named after the first Filipino victim of the First World War. Claudio moved to the United States as a young man in search of a better life before deciding to enlist in the US Army in 1917. The following year he died a month after being wounded whilst fighting in Europe. The Philippine government later decided to name one of the streets in Manila in his honour. Number 58 But enough about the apparently ghastly and weird city of Manila. The country's most populous city is Quezon City, with a population of 2,761,720 people, over a million more than Manila. Wow. Quezon City actually was the nation's capital between 1948 and 1976, when it was moved to Manila. Number 59 Marikina City in Luzon is often called the shoe capital of the Philippines owing to its large shoe industry. The area doubled down on this reputation in 2002 with the construction of the world's largest pair of shoes. Nice. The beefy brogues measure at over 5 meters long, almost 2.5 meters wide and 2 meters high. Wow. Number 60. Really makes sense, but you do what you like, Chris. Can that's, that's a lot of shoes and that's, that's a big shoe. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Like I guess can't uh, go into that city with any uh, scuffed up shoes. No, no, it's I mean, it's it that to me is interesting as hell, because I mean, look, look, we have what the biggest ball of yarn or the world's largest rubber band ball or some stupid shit like that. Yeah, we we, we have all those roadside attractions, but hey, I'm glad they had something and they ran with it. Yeah, pretty much. Lound City, located on the Philippine island of Jacob, I can't say it. Ah. Negros is home to the wonder tree of Canlaun, a massive tree that is estimated to be around 1,330 years old. Whoa. Number 61. Let me run that back. I, I missed that. To be around 1,330 years old. 1,330. Old tree. Good God. Wow. If only those limbs could talk. Well, yeah, man. Holy crap. That's crazy. All right. Hooey. Number 61. Often considered the unofficial national dish of the Philippines, adobo is a dark stew of chicken and or pork cooked in soy sauce, vinegar, crushed garlic, bay leaf, and black peppercorns. The flavor is so popular that you can buy adobo flavored varieties of Filipino snack foods such as nuts, chips, noodle soups, and corn crackers. Ah, adobo. That's is what that I need to adobo? get. Adobo? Let's see. I like adobo. Uh, let me let me do this. Is there a difference between Mexican adobo and Filipino adobo? Um, let's see. It says via Google, Filipino adobo adobo is an indigenous dish that received a Spanish name because it reminded the Spaniards of how they marinated and preserved meat. Spices. They are not the same, but they are similar because each culture needed to preserve and flavor food so it wouldn't rot. Interesting. Okay. Nice. Okay. In so I, I was just Mexican. like, whoa. I was like, that's a, that's a, and we have that spice in the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have in my kitchen too. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm just thinking, like, I've collected Australian chicken salt. Is that the next spice I need to acquire? Is Filipino adobo. You you need to put that on the on the shelf behind you. The world of spices. Yes. Your, your spice shelf. Yes, something like that. I'll do it. I'll do it later at the end of this video. Number sixty-two. One of the most interesting Philippine dishes is balut, and by interesting, I mean deeply unappetizing and frankly unsettling. Very simply, balut is a boiled fertilized duck egg with a half-developed bird embryo inside. It is said to be an aphrodisiac, which is incorrect. Num I'm no, sorry, man. I will pass. That's a hard pass for me. Yeah. That's a very hard pass. I'm not, I'm not going to hate on anyone that loves that or eats that. That's just... I'm not, good without that. Not for us. And there's other... Uh, ways to achieve that status as opposed to eating a 
duck embryo not doing that yeah no and you know what hear me out on this i'm letting you guys know beforehand (laughs) beforehand that's not for me so that way it's not insulting when i say no thank you yeah same here it's not for me no thank you just don't offer it and there will be no insult Mm -hmm. exactly number 63 other unique Filipino dishes include camaro, which are field crickets <laughs> fried in soy sauce, vinegar, and sugar. Papayton, a stew made from goat or cow innards, flavored with the animal's own bile. And soup number five, a soup made out of the testicles and penis of a bull, which again is considered an aphrodisiac for some strange unknown reason. I think I'll just stick to Jollibee. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm I'm good. Like I said, same same statement as before. Onto this. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Nintendo 64. Owing to the shortage oh. of tomatoes during the Second World War, the Philippines has a ketchup alternative made with prepare yourself bananas. Banana ketchup. B a n a n a s. The sauce isn't naturally red, so it is dyed to match ketchup's traditional crimson hue. And number 65. It has been estimated that Filipinos send about 400 million text messages every day, adding up to roughly 142 billion texts per year. That's more than the total number of daily text messages sent in the US and Europe combined. As such, the Philippines is now known as the text messaging capital of the world. Number- that's a lot of text messages. That's a, that's a lot of text messages. I'm, I'm a big caller. Yeah, you are. Yeah. And you've made me into a caller too. Yeah. It's, says, it's just so much better. It's so much better. You can't... Uh, come on. It, it, there's so many misread texts out there. You know, you <laughs> can't put inflection or emotion into it. Yes, emoticons. But I hate you if you send emoticons. <laughs> all right. I'm sending all emoticons next yeah. time. <laughs> just to yeah. piss you off. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Number 66. In 2014, Time Magazine ranked Makati, a city in the Manila metropolitan area, as the selfie capital of the world. Yes, it is apparently Filipinos that struggle the most with the trappings of modern vanity. Tis folly, I say. Folly! I have no idea what they're talking about. I mean, they seem like a (laughs) area that knows how to unplug and, you know, go do... (laughs) Right? Touch grass. Definitely they know how to unplug. They're sending that many messages a day. Yeah. Goodness. I hope they do. Dang. Number 67. In rural parts of the Philippines, most women give birth at home. A local custom involves burying the baby's placenta beneath the house, often along with an object that symbolizes what the parents hope the child will grow up to be. In urban areas, however, this practice is prohibited by the health authorities because you are literally burying bio waste underneath your house. Yeah, it makes sense, the second part. I mean, I don't know the first part if it has any use. There's... Well, stem cells. Yeah, it, I guess. it does. It does. Yeah. It does have a lot of stem cells. So, yeah. It, 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 but it's interesting that, you know, some of these old, old customs just can't be transferred to the now because of health reasons. Yeah. <laughs> makes sense. Number 68. Mature members of the Bogobo, the largest indigenous group in the country, are known to practice tooth sharpening, in which a file is used to grind their pearly whites to a point. Oh, the no. group also blacken their teeth using burnt plant matter, as black pointy teeth are a sign of beauty. Obviously. Numbers. No, hell no. Hell oh, no. I'm sorry, that just sounds, oh my god, it just like, oh that hurts me. That oh. hurts me, I couldn't. Yeah, yeah, especially I've I've had root canals, I've had crowns. Oh, man. Like I don't want any more bad stuff done oh, to my just, teeth. Just thinking about a file grinding on your teeth is just oh, it just yeah. Sh- oh. No, thank you. Hell no. Hell no. 69. <laughs> Not to people who are willing to waste perfectly good military hardware, the people of the Philippines repurposed thousands of army jeeps that the US military left behind after the Second World War oh, and right. turned them into public transportation vehicles called jeepneys. Modern versions of the jeepney can accommodate up to 18 people and are often creatively adorned in vivid and colorful kitsch designs, including paintings of basketball stars, cartoon characters, religious sayings, and even flashing neon lights. 
There are roughly 50,000 jeepneys operating in Manila alone. Number 70. In fact, Filipinos are so proud of their jeepneys that they even sent one to be exhibited at the Philippine Pavilion at the 1964 New York World's Fair to stand as a national image of the Filipino people. Nice. Number 71. Filipinos are known to observe an extremely long Christmas season, That's beginning right. with the playing of carols in September and ending for most people on the 6th of January with the Feast wow. of the Free Kings, around four months in total. This makes it... Yeah, yeah. That's a long time. Yeah, when we, whatever video we started out, I think it was 14 uh, things that yeah. we learned through the comments that it's it's all the months of that have burr in them. September, October, November, December. That's, that's crazy. Talk about, so when we, guys, in the future, when we refer to the holiday season, it is not your holiday season. It's different. We Our holiday season, this, the end of November, November, mid-November is holiday, beginning of the holiday season. Yeah, yeah. Or to, to some companies, like the beginning of November yeah. when they start to play Christmas music. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, and yep. it pretty much ends around New Year's. Yeah. Yeah, so not that's pretty much two months if you're lucky. A solid four months in the Philippines. Yeah. Yeah. The longest Christmas season in the world. Number 72. As part of the festivities, Filipinos often celebrate Simbang Gabi, or Night Mass, where devoted Catholics attend nine dawn services in a row leading up to Christmas Eve. Oh if a person God. attends all nine Masses, it is said their wish will be granted. But with services beginning as early as 4am, the holiday conflicts with my personal belief to not wake up that early in my life ever. It's what <laughs> Jesus would have wanted. I'm with you there. Number 73. Yeah. Another notable Philippine holiday is the Day of Valor, which honors those who fought during the Battle of Bataan in the Second World War. After the battle, approximately 75,000 Filipino and American troops were forced by the Japanese to march over 100 kilometers to prisoner camps. Thousands died of exhaustion, starvation, or execution. Number 74. There is a figure in Filipino folklore known as the... Really? You want me to say that? <laughs> oh, as Wang. A mythical, <laughs> shape-shifting, evil spirit that combines traits of vampires, witches, and ghouls. The Azwang is said to eat fetuses and small children, favoring oh their hearts and livers, presumably because the internal organs of the young are particularly delicious. Number 75. Basketball is the most popular sport in the Philippines. The Philippines Basketball Association is the first and oldest league in Asia, and the second oldest in the world after the National Basketball Association in the United States. Nice. Number 76. Though cockfighting has long been abolished in many nations, it is still very popular in the Philippines. In fact, the country is home to a huge cockfighting competition known as the World Slasher Cup, staged in Manila's Araneta Coliseum. That is... not good. That's not good. Number 77. <laughs> spider fighting in the Philippines is extremely popular with young people who will even store multiple spiders in matchbox stables. Apparently, the Filipino youth are too good for Pokemon Go. Snobs, the lot of them. <laughs> Number oh, seven. God. Cock fighting and spider fighting. I I'm fine with spider fighting. I don't give a shit. That is not a real insect that I want sharing this, this world with me. I understand that they're beneficial. Not to mm -hmm. me personally. So to me personally, I could, I don't mind if they just f off. Yeah. But um, that's crazy. <laughs> what they keep the spiders in like matchbox? No, like, no, bro. No. no, no, no. I couldn't. Don't. That's not a pet. It's not a. You're not training up a fighter. No. Hell no. Yeah. Oh, stick with God. stick with basketball. Yeah, or Pokemon Go. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, no, no. Or pool. Okay. Yeah, or yeah, or pool. Something. Exactly. Anything other than that. Oh. 78. Filipinos love a good shopping mall or shopping center, as we daintily call them here in jolly old England. In fact, the Philippines is home to three of the ten largest shopping malls in the world. Number 79. That's right. The Philippines is the world's largest exporter of coconuts and tropical fruits, such as papaya and mangosteen. Nice. Mangosteen, which I now understand is not named after nor in any way related to Bruce Springsteen, has been cultivated in Southeast Asia for thousands of years. Number 80. 
Very real first names that very real Filipino parents chose for their very real Filipino children include Bing, Bong, Bambi, Joker, Honeyboy, Girly, Peanuts, and Bum Bum. These aren't especially gendered either. You genuinely may bump into middle-aged men called Babe. Number 81. Nice. The modern Yo Yo was invented by a Filipino American by the name of Pedro Flores. In fact, the word yo yo comes from yo yo, which means come back in Ilocano, the third most widely spoken native language in the Philippines. Number 82. The antibiotic erythromycin, an important antibiotic widely used to treat chest infection, was discovered by a Filipino physician named Abelardo Aguilar in 1949. Erythromycin is especially useful for people who are allergic to penicillin and has saved millions of lives. Good nice. work, buddy. Uh, Number 83. Very, very topical. That's what my son is on right now. Really? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Because my wife and my son are allergic to the Cillins. The Cillin family. That so, one? yeah, mm. like penicillin, all that, you know, the, the ones that yeah, save the people's Yeah, the Cillin family. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Ugh. azithro, azithromycin, man, that's, that's, yeah, z pack is what it's, what, what we call it. Z-pack. Yeah, man. <laughs> awesome stuff. Thanks, Filipinos. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> University of Santo Tomas in Manila was founded by Dominican monks in 1611. That makes it older than America's Harvard University, which was not founded until 1636. Number 84. In terms of student population, the University of Santo Tomas is also the world's largest Catholic university in a single campus. Mazel tov. That is, am I using that right? <laughs> That's Number Jewish. 85. During his visit to the Philippines in 2015, the concluding mass given by Pope Francis in Manila's Luneta Park on the 18th of January was attended by an estimated 6 million Filipinos. This became the largest ever papal gathering in history, surpassing wow. a record set by Pope John Paul II during World Youth Day in 1995, which was also held in Luneta Park. Number 86 Contestants from the Philippines have won numerous major international beauty pageant titles. Three for Miss Universe, six for Miss International, one for Miss World, and five for Miss Earth titles, making it the second most successful nation behind the apparent stunners from Venezuela. Number 87. In 1992, Pepsi decided to combat low sales with a promotion they dubbed Number Fever, in which numbers printed on the inside of bottle caps corresponded to cash rewards. At the campaign's conclusion, the company announced that the grand prize of 1 million pesos would be awarded to whomever found a cap emblazoned with the number 349, of which only one would be released. However, due to a third-party manufacturing error, instead of producing a single 349 bottle cap, Pepsi ended up with over 800,000 of them. <laughs> number. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh man! Someone's gonna get disappointed. Hey, hey! You share the prize, right? You of a million prize. pesos oh, with eight hundred thousand. So basically, <laughs> everyone gets one or two pesos. I can't math. Don't uh, come at me, man. Man, that's crazy. All that right. is worse than the <laughs> Kylie Jenner deal you remember that no what is that what happened with that 2017 is like uh they were parodying not parodying but mocking up the occupy wall street mm -hmm. uh protests and kylie jenner walked out to police with a pepsi as a sign of unity and it went over so terribly makes sense oh man but that's what happens when you're not in control of your own product Mm -mm. That's what happens, Pepsi. Hope you hope you hemorrhage hemorrhage money. Yeah, yeah. Coke tastes better anyway. Yeah, hundred mm -hmm. percent. Eighty-eight. Initially, Pepsi denied responsibility for the mistake and refused to pay up, which unsurprisingly sparked widespread outrage in the form of lawsuits, property damage, and even riots. The violence riots? was so severe that several people lost their lives. Pepsi ultimately spent over 200 million Philippine pesos in settlements, not to mention the cost of the damage to their reputation. Number 89. A less upsetting cola-based Philippine fact regards Jazz Cola, a brand of soft drink produced by Pepsi rivals Coca-Cola exclusively for the Philippine market. 
The drink is available only in the Philippines and is in fact specifically targeted at consumers in the Visayas region in the middle of the country. Some sources have reported that Jazz Cola fuels Visayan pride among its teen consumers. Number 90. Jazz Cola. Cool, man. Y'all better help me find some of that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Hey, that's man. that's really cool. You know what happens is like you have these big, big um, international brands that know that there's a market there. And they yeah. actually do whatever it takes to cater to that. Right. Smart. Yeah, very smart. In 1977, the entirety of Kaluit Island in the Western Philippines was declared to be a wildlife sanctuary and game reserve by the Marcos Administration to Save Endangered Animals in Kenya, Africa. The sanctuary contains both African and endemic Philippine wildlife, such as zebras, giraffes, gazelles, sea turtles, and Palawan peacock pheasants. Number 91. In 2011, a group of Filipino dwarves led by Alejandro Deron Jr. announced their plan to establish the country's first colony for little people, in order to escape daily harassment and discrimination. At the time, Deron was a 35-year-old bartender working at The Hobbit House, the country's only restaurant run entirely by little people. Oh my goodness. Number 92. Back when the area now known as Texas was under Spanish colonial rule, it was also known as Nuevas Filipinas or Nuevo Reino de Filipinas, respectively translating to New Philippines and New Kingdom of the Philippines. Eventually the name was dropped in favour of just Texas because everything is bigger in Texas except the names of things. Number 90. Wow, we almost could have called Texas New Philippines. Yeah, that's it would, interesting. Would have had a totally different outlook on that state. Yeah. I wonder how that would have turned out. Cool. <laughs> Weird. 23. On the 5th of December 1965, a one megaton nuclear bomb fell into the Philippine Sea close to Japan when the attack jet to which it was attached accidentally fell off the carrier. The pilots, aircraft, and the nuclear bomb were never recovered. And it wasn't until 1989 that the Pentagon revealed that this had even happened. Number 94. All right, where's that episode of the Fat Electrician? <laughs> oh, so we're just down one? It's just out there in the bottom of the ocean somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's great. Super. That's comforting. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Dude. Oh, there's a popular souvenir that tourists can purchase in the Philippines known as a barrel man, which consists of a small statuette of a man stood inside a round wooden barrel. When the barrel is removed, the male figure inside is exposed, revealing a side-splittingly hilarious erection. Oh, how we laughed. How we laughed. Number 95. The Cagayan Battles of 1582, which occurred in northern Luzon, are the only recorded battles known to have involved European infantry fighting against samurai warriors. Number 96. Every nation in the world except the Philippines and the strange, tiny Catholic city-state of Vatican City allow for some form of divorce. Though Muslims in the Philippines do have the right to divorce in accordance with their religion, the only option available to most Filipinos who can't bear the sight of their former loved one is annulment. As such, the Philippines is the only UN nation in which divorce is generally illegal. Number 97. Oh, okay, wow. so annulment. You can get an annulment. You can't get a divorce. Got which it. I think what that is is like a kind of like a no harm, no foul thing. Like yeah. no one gets shit. Like, right. no one has... That's interesting. That's interesting. That's very interesting. I wonder how mm -hmm. that works. Especially yeah. for those people that seek annulment after they've been together for so long. Yeah, yeah, that'd be interesting. Someone below let us know. Yeah, man, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. The Philippines accounts for roughly 43% of the planet's gin consumption. Ah. That's gin incredible. What? It's fact number 97, it's not all going to be gold, okay? Number 98. In 1844, the Philippines moved from one side of the international date line to the other, which had the curious effect of completely eliminating the 31st of December 1844 from the history of the Philippines. Number 99. Wow. According to a study carried out in 2013, 85% of people in the Philippines have a favorable view of the United States. Hilariously, hey. the study found that 84% of Americans have a favorable view of their own country, making the Philippines the most pro-American country in the world, more so than America <laughs> itself. 
number 100. <laughs> Yay! On the 4th of May 2006, 3,738 women in Manila set the world record for the most women simultaneously breastfeeding. Muzzle tough! I don't know, I still feel like I'm not using it right. Yeah. Hey babies, it's uh, fact 101. That's exciting, isn't it? In August of 2016, it was discovered that a Filipino fisherman had found the world's largest natural pearl and had kept it under his bed for 10 years entirely unaware of its worth. Now known as the Pearl of Puerto, the pearl weighs in at a staggering 34 kilograms. Wow. So that was 101 facts. That's a very valuable thing right That's there. That's crazy. Man. Oh my god. Again, a lot of stuff we knew already from what we've checked out, and a yeah. lot of shocking facts here. It's always good to have these random things. It's fun, and let me know, let us know in the comment section if these are true facts or just whatever. And what did they miss, and what should we... <laughs> uh, maybe some reminders of how we can not stick out like a sore thumb as American tourists, even though most of y'all seem to like us pretty nicely. Hey, I'm fine with that. As long as we're, 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 we're what I say? We're good house guests. So You're in your house. Yep. Man. Anyway, yo, thanks for watching. Consider subscribing and watching another video. What else, Dan? Unplug and do something epic, guys. See y'all in the next one. Later. Fellas, we could be that mistake. Let's do this.